Hello there, in today's video we're going to talk about why printing will raise your landscape photography game. I'll also give you a few tips to get you started in bringing your photographs to life. Let's go! Before we get into it though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful presence online and run your business. On my landscape photography journey, I strive for a deeper meaning, to find and share a love of the landscape and the outdoors, where so many of us have become disconnected from it. For most of us, landscape photography is just so much more than simply climbing a hill and taking a pretty picture. It's healing, it's creative, it's challenging and rewarding, and producing an image that connects and resonates with people is such a powerful way to tell your story. So what does this have to do with printing? Well, the other week I talked about how the technical aspects that we spend so much time talking about in photography circles often really don't matter that much. What's important is the link between the visualization at the beginning and then the final piece of work that you produce at the end. Now understanding the artistic meaning and what we're doing or what we're trying to achieve is really the key to this visualization as we start to create our compositions in the landscape. Making good photographs is easier said than done and almost every single conversation I have with clients involves some kind of insecurity about their work and particularly their compositions. Now I'm no different, but I would encourage you to try and embrace these insecurities and self-doubts and self-criticisms because they're such an integral part of the artistic process as a whole. It means you care. One of the very best ways to calm these insecurities is to start printing your work and realize the photographic process right through from the planning to the final print. I just can't overstate this enough, but by regularly printing your work, it will undoubtedly improve your photography. What it does, first and foremost, is produce something that's real, that's beautiful, that's tangible, with genuine value to people. It's a piece of artwork that then immediately separates you and your work from the billions of other images that are getting uploaded online every single day. Like me, I imagine you would only want to print your very best images. And this is totally understandable because printing costs money. It's not always cheap either. And what that means is that printing essentially creates a barrier to entry for your work entering your real life portfolio. Now, what this usually means is that we will end up looking through our images, select a few of the best ones, and then print those. But undoubtedly, the biggest improvement that's come from in my landscape photography over the last few years is by shifting that barrier to entry from the point after the post-processing where we're just selecting those nice ones to bringing it right back to the start when we're actually shooting the image in the field. Anyone who shoots film will understand the effect that this has because by thinking about the final print at the point of making the image in the field forces us to be more considered, more engaged with the process and less likely just to take a series of snapshots hoping that one of them will be right. Now, it's not going to be easy. Getting good at anything takes time, it takes practice, and it takes effort. Uh, there is no quick fix for that. But as you start regularly printing your work, the successes and the failures, you can hold them in your hand, you can look at them, you can understand so much more intimately what works and what doesn't, and you cannot help but learn from that. So once you've decided to start printing your images, it becomes very apparent very quickly that printing is pretty much an art form all to itself. So I wanted to just talk about a few things that you might want to think about to get you going. Definitely the first thing to consider is how you are going to produce your images. You have two options here really. The first one is to do it yourself and print at home with a printer that you've bought. I have here the Canon Pro 10S printer. It is a great printer, it produces A3 plus images, which is slightly bigger than A3. It takes 10 inks. It's about 400 pounds to buy at the moment. Inks cost about 10 pounds each, and I replace probably about four inks per month. Owning your own printer makes pretty much no financial sense whatsoever, unless you're selling images regularly and at a decent price as well. I do it for the love of the art, and I also want to be in 
control of the process from start to finish. But if you're just getting started, that might not be the way forward for you. The other way to do it is to upload your images online and use a printing service or a lab to produce those images. If you are going to do that, I would just encourage you to find a good printer. There are many of them now, but find a good one that A, will let you select the different type of papers and then pr provides ICC profiles for you. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So the next things we're going to talk about are the same, whether you're printing uh, in a lab or at home. But the, probably the next thing to think about is the type of paper we're going to use. And there are essentially three types of paper. We have full gloss, which is great for capturing all the color. It's not particularly that popular at the moment, but I love it for my water drops, particularly that are very saturated. I use it for some very saturated color landscapes as well. I think it looks great with that. More popular probably is semi-gloss. I use this paper here. It is a uh, Burrita Photographique, it's called, by Canson, which I do all my printing with now pretty much exclusively. Burrita, like this, Photographique, is a semi-gloss. It's somewhere, obviously, between glossy and matte paper, but it has a really classy feel to it. Uh, it it's just really high quality, and it still has that slight sheen on it, which I think works really well for so many photographs. I use it for a lot of my long exposures. I think it works really well for that type of image. And then the third type is a full matte paper. It's best off if you use like a really high quality cotton rag paper. For all my papers, I will use the heaviest paper that I possibly can get my hands on or that my printer will actually still print on. Um, but then that generally gives you that slightly higher quality. But the matte papers are great because they work for such a variety of images. It looks high quality. It's actually the, the nicest one to sort of hold in your hand as well because it just feels so nice. But it also is great for black and white because it holds, it has a high DMAX rating. That means it holds blacks really, really well. It won't show as much color. You'll lose a little bit of saturation with your matte papers, but sort of selecting the type of paper that you use for the type of image is really down to you to experiment with. You can, a lot of the good printing websites will send you a paper pack a sort of sample pack so you can try and have a look at the different types of paper that you might want for your photography. So the third thing to think about before we send our files off to the lab or print them at home, we want to prepare that file for print because if we just printed the edited picture that you've done already, it's likely that you're going to get that back disappointed and you will have wasted your money. So let's get into the computer and take a quick look at what we need to do. I'll show you a few things now, but I talk a lot more about this in my Landscape Photography Masterclass. We go through the whole printing process, right from planning. We go out onto location, take the images, post-process them, and then print them at the end. And we go through this in a bit more detail. You can get the full Landscape Photography Masterclass right now for just £5.99 a month as part of your Raw Room subscription. You can cancel any time, and I really think you are going to love it. So just go to the link down below, check out the Raw Room, uh, and I know the people that have subscribed already are really enjoying that. So to produce our files today, I'm going to use Adobe Lightroom. I know a lot of you are using different photo editors these days, but Lightroom and Capture One are far superior for creating your prints because they have sort of dedicated print modules, which a lot of the, the cheaper photo editors don't yet have. I'm sure they'll catch up, but at the moment, Lightroom and Capture One are somewhat superior. As we get into Lightroom here, this is the image we are going to photograph. I took this on my video when I was talking about how to photograph waterfalls. It's in uh, North Yorkshire. I love the image. It's a really great one to talk about printing as well because we've got such a mixture of shadows, of color, of highlights, and it's a real, it's the kind of image that can be a real challenge to print. So the first thing we want to do every time we want to print an image is in Lightroom, come down to here where it says soft proofing. Now click that and it will create a white background because to prepare your prints, having a white background is generally better because it's probably going to be sat in a white frame or against a white wall or have a, a white or ivory mat uh, around the image. Having that white background lets us see the contrast at the edges of the images uh, that we are going to print. Next thing is to come up to here and we want to click create a proof copy. 
Now what that does is essentially create a virtual copy of the image that then becomes our print file. You can then create a collection in Lightroom or in uh, Capture One and save those print files in, in a separate collection. That's how I do it so I know I'm organized and I can print those images really easily every time I want to come back to them. Now the next thing we have up here is the profile. Now this is where the, those ICC profiles come in. What an ICC profile is, is a little uh, bit of information that you install onto your computer. And it is a link between the, the printer and the paper. So if you're using a lab online, you want to download their ICC profiles. If you're printing at home, you want to go onto the paper manufacturer's website and download the ICC profiles for your printer. Some paper companies will do custom ICC profiles for you. It's a little bit more complicated, but having those profiles will make it much easier when you want to get the color right in your prints. So if we come up here, we can see the profile, and then I, these are the profiles I've got installed for my paper. So I am going to print this image on a semi-gloss, on that Canson Burrito Photographic, because I know it's going to work really nicely, because I've got that water in there. So having that little bit of gloss works really well for the water. And I just think it's gonna look really classy with that those dark shadow areas as well in semi-gloss. So that is this one up here, which is already selected. And if you click on Simulate Paper and Ink, just here, that does what it says on the tin, basically. The, the screen will try and to try to represent what it will look like. Now, what a lot of people often ask me about is, do you need a calibrated monitor? Now, if you have a calibrated monitor, that is going to be beneficial to you because you can be fairly confident that what you see on the screen, once you've used those ICC profiles, will be quite similar to what comes out of the printer at the end. Now, I used to do it without a calibrated monitor. And all I do for that is to use, uh, to just first to create a smaller printer, four by six. If you've got your own printer, that's easy. If you are printing at a lab, it's gonna take a little bit more time, but it means you're not going to waste your money. So like, we're just gonna do that. We're gonna first just print straight away this image as a four by six, exactly how I've edited it, and we'll see how that turns out. So there we go, that's done. And that's the four by six there. Now it looks okay. It's not too bad, but it's too dark in the shadow areas. I feel like I've lost some detail and the highlighted areas have just lost a bit of that pizzazz and a bit of that punch that I can see on the screen here. Now, an easy way to get around that is just to simply increase the exposure on your proof file because when we have a physical print like this, the light is actually reflecting off the, the light that we have naturally in the room is reflecting off the surface of the image back into your eyes. And that's what we perceive. When it's on the screen, it's backlit. The actual screen has the LED lights or however it is lit behind the image, coming through the image and then into our eyes. So it's actually quite a different way to look at the image. So when we remove that backlight, it usually ends up a little bit underexposed for the final print. So I just very simply increase the exposure. So I'm going to go up about a third or 0.4 of a stop. I know that works with, with my screen and with my printer quite well. Again, it's gonna take a little bit of experimentation. It might be that your monitor isn't calibrated. So you, your images come out a little bit more magenta or a little bit more green. It's then just a case of changing the tint or changing the temperature a little bit to get that final print right. You don't need to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a calibrated high quality photo monitor. Like I said, I've increased it to uh, by 0.4 of a stop. It looks too bright on the screen now, but I'm confident that will look great once I print that out. So to do my print, I'm going to use the Canon software that Canon provides. It's a plugin for Lightroom. So I'm just gonna go up here, go to plugin extras, and then go to Canon Print Studio Pro. That then pops up like this. I just need to change the paper type. I want to do a full A3 plus print. Right, another question I get asked a lot is about borders on the actual print. I will quite often print borderless, and that's what I'm gonna do here because I don't mind, particularly on glossy images, just having the print and then the matte 
or uh, that we that going to mount it in a lot of people will print a border and i have with the likes of this image because this is on fine art paper and my printer won't print borderless with fine art paper having a border also means that it's easier to mount you then end up with that double border as well that a lot of people like and does look very very classy you can then sign the the edge of the image as well rather than the mount but it's totally a personal thing i i do different things depending on the image again it's just personal preference and just having a bit of practice to decide what works best for you but for this image i want to go borderless so i'm going to go like that uh, and by going borderless it means that you maximize that paper as well let's just spin that round once more it means you get the very biggest image that you can possibly get from your printer and your paper right so with canon print pro here i can then just click print uh, i know that the printer will do the rest uh, so i just need to get the paper ready and then i'll hit print and away we go So there we go this is it this is the final a3 plus print it's a really nice size uh it's such a beautiful image to print out i can then like i said earlier get into it look closely i'm just learning so much about my own photography every time i look at an image like this because of the color and because of the really nice shadowy areas i think this is going to look great in a white frame as well so i think that's what i'll frame it into a white frame afterwards and i think that's going to look absolutely beautiful but printing your images is undoubtedly a great way to improve your landscape photography uh, it's just an enjoyable rewarding thing to do as well and if you give it a try i guarantee you you'll get hooked and you will have no regrets whatsoever so once you've created those prints, many of us want to then start thinking about selling them. And this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And Squarespace is actually a great platform to start selling your images online. It's so easy with very little technical skill to set up an online store with Squarespace, just like I've done. You can then create products, sell your prints, and you can create variations as well. So you can sell them framed and unframed, just like I do. It also has built-in marketing tools and analytics so you can sort of tailor things to reach the clients that you want to reach and start making some money and selling your images. So just go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And then if you like the website that you've created and you want to go ahead, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And I'll see you on another one very, very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography, out. <laughs>